And with that being said, we move on to the Cowboys, my man. Commander section over. Let's start it up with our – let's go – I'm trying to think of kind words to say. No, I don't have any kind words about the Cowboys. Let's go with the Cowgirls, man. Just a team that I think everybody expected to make some moves to shore up the holes in their roster, and instead they kind of went in the opposite direction. Yeah. Where you want to talk about losing Amari Cooper. They obviously – I mean, it's unfortunate what happened with Tyron Smith, but like – Losing him to that injury. And I believe he's supposed to come back later in the year, but they're still going to be missing him yeah. for the, the season. Jason Peters isn't exactly a great replacement. Also, screw you, Jason Peters. Just wanted to put that in there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I, I don't have anything bad to say about JP. It's, again, another I guy know. who came, that's, that's messed up. That's messed up. Came back on the dark side. It's unfortunate. But anyway, man, this is a team where everybody always talks about the expectations they have, the expectations they have. I think this is one of the years, it's been a while, but I think this is one of the definite years we can say that the Cowboys regressed a little bit in terms of their overall roster. Say what you want about the yeah. team's underperformances the last few years. They've always maintained a pretty decent roster from top to bottom. I think they definitely regressed a bit in the sense of that this offseason. And there's quite a few question marks they got to check out. I think, ironically, the only like complete non-question mark this year to me is Dak. That's kind of a bad thing because now it's just kind of known <laughs> that he's just going to be a slightly above average quarterback. That's what you're going to get out of him. You're not going to get any more than that. You're not going to get any less than that. He's just going to be a slightly above yeah. average quarterback. And Parsons. Parsons isn't a question. Parsons isn't a question. Either. That man was a monster last year. Big ups to him. We'll see how he does again this year. Can he possibly improve on what was already a fantastic first season? But yeah. all of that aside, there's some definite problems on this team, man. You want to talk about the secondary, just Trayvon Diggs saved him with a bunch of interceptions, but even he also got cooked on a bunch of plays, you know? That's a given take. Got cooked take on right some there. of the plays he got interceptions on, too. Point being, the secondary <laughs> is a real question right now. I think, who's the other guy? Brown. Who's their other corner? Anthony Brown. Oh, my. Anthony like, Brown. Let me let me just say real quick, too, like, the safety position, I, I feel like they got some solid dudes there, but the corner position, man, like, it's like, okay, Jordan Lewis is going to play the slot, but... That out, those outside positions are rough. Bottom line being, that's a that's a big that's a big hole right there. You want to talk yeah. about aside from Parsons, they got ah, uh, what's his name? Lawrence? Lawrence? Is that the right name? Uh, oh, Demarcus. Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were talking Demarcus. about Leighton Van Rash. Yeah, Demarcus Lawrence, yeah. beast, Lawrence, still an yeah. absolute beast. Great in the running game, though. Awesome. Point being, but you got those two there. But there are some. There's a bit of. It depends on where they decide to play Parsons, I guess. But you could argue that linebacker is a touch of a hole for them, too, if they bring Parsons down to the edge or if they just kind of play him in, like, star and he goes wherever. Yeah, because, I mean, sorry, I know we're kind of going back and forth here. but oh, it's good. I mean, look, like, you know, if, if one of their defensive ends goes down or, like, D-Wall goes down again, like you said, like, then you got then you got Leighton Van Der Esch, who's probably going to play, you know, he's probably going to play in the middle. I mean, he he – kind of signed a low value deal this offseason. I mean, I think he's better than what the deal gave, but you know, he hasn't been the guy since he's been in, in his rookie year. I mean, you know, like Anthony Barr, I mean, that's a good guy to have replacing Parsons. It fits the role more, but I, I mean, I think he's kind of on the, the back end of his career for sure. So. Yes. You know, that spot there's definite, and I want to give Dan Quinn credit too. He had a really good defense. Oh yeah. Year. Give him all the credit Excellent. in the world, but they have some holes position wise on the defense is what I'm trying to say. And then you go to the offensive side, man. Losing Amari Cooper is going to hurt. And I like CD. I really do. I like his style. I like the way he plays. But it's a lot to ask a second-year receiver to be your number one. We'll see how he handles that transition. Third-year, third right? Year, sorry. Third-year receiver. It's a lot to ask a third-year receiver to handle all that. We'll see if he can really take that next step to being number one, drawing number one level coverage all the time, especially with Michael Gallup being out for the first part of the season. Yeah. That's another big thing that I think is going to go unnoticed. I think if the transition would have been a lot easier for CD if Gallup was still there, but he is not. And then, who do they they saw Cedric Wilson, right? I'm not forgetting. They didn't lose. No, him. he's on Miami. Oh, you're right. Forgot about it's that. Miami. So talk to me then, man. Who's oh they got James Washington from the Steelers, but he's also he's hurt, also right? hurt. Yeah. So you know, there's some they're having some they have some interesting question marks at wide receiver. We'll see how that all that translates. And then you go to the running yeah. back room. The running back room, I think, is solid for them. They got Zeke and Pollard. We kind of know what those two are going to do. I don't really have much else to say on that end. They should worry a bit about the offensive line with the injury to Smith. But as long as Zach Martin is still there, they'll have someone anchoring things. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say just on some of the things you mentioned, like I, I think I think CD is going to be up for the task, especially because I think 
when Gallup comes back, I think he'll, I think he's still going to play in the slot a good bit because I feel like Tolbert's going to kind of flank a little bit and play. I think he's going to play outside most of the time. That's another thing. Like Jalen Tolbert, I don't know if the plan was to have him start right away, but he's third guy right now. And with Gallup out, I think he's, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's the second guy. Um, also, I mean, back to CD, he's had eight drops in each of the last two seasons. You know, for a number one receiver, you can't drop the ball eight times a year. Um, and he's going to get more targets this year. That's something that's got to get cleaned up. But, yeah, and then Michael Gallup, it's a huge question mark just because of the health. I mean, we know what he is when he's healthy, but he's not on the field a lot much in these past couple of years. So, um, I mean, then you're talking about probably Noah Brown's probably going to play a good bit now. Um, they do have Kevante Turpin, who is from the USFL. He played college ball at TCU, so they know him well from Texas. But Had some um, solid returns in the preseason. He really did. Yeah. Yeah, that that dude's a playmaker. He's freaking electric. I, I I was a huge fan of him in college before off the field stuff happened. But um, you know, just talking about the usage of him and you know, talk about the running backs too. I mean, talk about Kellen Moore, man. I mean, that's a guy who really flexes his muscles the first half of the season. Back half of the season, it's not quite the same. And that's I, I think that's another question mark there is like, can Kellen Moore actually like, you know. Don't show off too much early. You, you obviously want to like you want to flash some stuff, but have stuff to flash later in the season too. So either get more creative or save some of that stuff, man. But um, and also I, I think to touch on Zeke, I love Pollard. You know, I love Pollard. He's a beast. He's going to be a contributor. Um, he, keep in mind he's also got to return kicks and punts now. CD is not going to be returning punts anymore. And also, I mean, as a guy who's the second running back, it's not a guy you want being. You know, re- you don't want him returning too much. Now he's got to return both. It's a lot of usage. So if he goes down, they don't really have that guy. Like they don't really have the depth at running back position. Rico Dowdle is not really much of a name. At least right now he's not. Maybe he proves me wrong. But you talk about Zeke. I actually think I, I think Zeke's going to be really good this year. Um, I don't know if he's going to be MVP caliber, but I think as long as the offensive line gets stuff figured out, which it's a big if, their offensive line is. I mean, it's Zach Martin and everyone else right now. That is a huge concern. They have guys who have played like Terrence Steele, but. It's not. It's not the offensive line we knew of like three or four years ago with Travis no. Frederick and all Connor those guys. Connor McGovern's man. up there now too, but I think he had to move yeah. positions to he's, accommodate. He's an experienced too. Tyler B. at center is really, really a hole. I mean, he's got to develop if they want to have a shot. But you know, if if, if they're doing well, I, th- I think that's another thing that kind of affects like the Zeke Pollard thing. Like, there's a lot of talk about that. And again, I love Pollard. I'm not sure if he's that guy who, when he gets put in that primary back role, is he going to have that same effect? Because I think it's kind of that change of pace that allows him to do what he does. Um, and I, I would love to see Pollard as that number one guy and to prove that notion wrong. But with that offensive line, I think it helps to have someone with a little more speed out there who can get to the edge when it's versus Zeke kind of in between the tackles. Who I don't know if he can quite get to the edge the same as he used to be able to. You know, if the offensive line's not doing their job, I mean, Zeke can only do so much. I mean, only so many running backs can only do so much with that offensive line they've got there. So, yeah, I, I think – Offensive line, I think, point being, that's a big question mark to me, which I usually don't say about the Cowboys O-line. past couple of years, it's gotten worse. I got you, man. With all that being said, I think we've touched on yep. most things for this team. I don't think many people expect them to be contenders this year. And with that being said, let me get to my records, man. Do we ever? No, we don't ever. But, you know, <laughs> the Cowboys fans. Do. Max, I have the Cowboys going 10-7. I can't see them doing any better than 10 and 7, especially being division winners, I believe, last year. They were the division winners, right? Yeah, they won the division. So point being, being division was winners, they had the toughest schedule pretty much out of the NFC East. I can't see them going more than 10 and 7. And at their men, I really do think they could get bopped a little bit this year if they're not careful. I have their minimum record at 4 and 13. And with that being said, my actual prediction, my overall prediction for the Cowboys this year is 8 and 9. I think they'll go out at eight and nine. It's just unfortunate. It really is once again, I'll stand on the strength of schedule. They have a tough one ahead of them. They got to face some teams that just flat out outclass them. If they can pull those games off, I'm fine. But another thing I think which you and me didn't talk about, surprisingly, I'm just realizing, but he's that irrelevant, to be honest with you. Mike McCarthy, still the head coach. Still there. Uh, Still there, man. There's no getting around that. He is still there. So I got so bad. That and all the other reasons, everything we discussed. I got the Cowboys going eight and nine. Where are you seeing them, man? Just real quick on the Mike McCarthy there. It's amazing how you can have, like, a, as much as I bash Kellen Moore, a, a brilliant offensive mind like Kellen Moore, a brilliant defensive mind like Dan Quinn, and then just nothing with Mike McCarthy. I, I'm 
I, I look, I'm not an NFL coach. I'm sure he's doing a lot behind the scenes, but in turn, uh, comparatively to other NFL coaches, I mean, you get the point. I have, I do have them going 10 and seven. Look, the Cowboys, they're still a good football team. They still have a lot of the pieces on that defense. And I think people forget like offense, obviously they kind of get that notion that they're a juggernaut. The defense is what made them what they were last year. And I really think that's, what's going to push them over the top. Also, I mean, Pollard gets them in great field position. I think that helps a lot when you have a guy who can set you up and, and, and you know, at least if, even if your offense doesn't do do their job, you know, you have a punter and Brian Anger who can flip the field there. If, you know, if you have Pollard returning kicks well, you have Brian Anger flipping the field, your, their defense is going to do their job. So while well, I think Brett Maher is going to miss a ton of kicks this year, I do think they'll be able to eke out 9-10 wins, and I think they will be in the contention for a wild card. 